This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. One of the first reviews I ever made as Mr. Mobile was for the Bose QC35s, and they actually represented a list of firsts. They were my first noise-canceling headphones. They were the first to convince me that I had enough to say about headphones to make reviews about them, and they were the first headphones that I'd actually spent what I considered to be real money on. They cost $349. So when I heard that Apple's first self-branded headphones were gonna cost $549, I was so incensed that I almost skipped them. But then I thought about just how many headphones I had covered in the years since those Bose QC35s, and you know how few of them truly wowed me anymore. So I bought a pair. And after seven days testing the AirPods Max, I have never been more deeply disheartened to say Wow. I'll discuss why I'm so dejected about that proclamation of preeminence when I cover these can's cons. But let's start with the pros, and let's begin those with comfort. When I first picked these up, I thought there was no way I was going to be able to wear them full time. At 395 grams, the stainless steel and aluminum AirPods Max are 35% heavier than the B&O H9Is that I've been wearing for a while, 64% heavier than the Bose QC35s. But there is indeed some magic lurking somewhere between the knit canopy headband and the mesh textile ear cups, because on my head, the weight just kind of evaporates. With most headphones, if I wear them too long, I'll start to get that top of the skull spike of pressure and pain, and that's what I was worried about with these. So I kept them on for as many hours as I could, every day for almost a full week. And you know what? No spikes, no headaches, and incidentally, no sweat rings around my ears either, which were as common with the leather padded competition as the flaking that would inevitably plague them. Another reason I can wear them all day? Apple's transparency mode is the best I've ever heard. This is a very common feature with noise canceling headphones. You can not only mute inbound noise, but if you want, you can reverse that and actually amplify the sounds of the outside world so that you don't get, you know, hit by a vehicle or jumped for your headphones. But with most headphones, that background amplification has a harsh artificial quality. It's good enough to listen to something quick like an airport announcement, but you wouldn't want to hold a conversation through it. By contrast, Apple's transparency mode sounds exactly like the outside world. It's like you're not even wearing headphones. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. The difference is made all the more apparent when you talk. You can hear your own voice through transparency on the AirPods Max in a way that you just can't through any other noise-canceling headphones that I've tested, anyway. And when you do want to shut the world out, well, these also boast the best noise canceling I've used. I have a great way to test it, too. My fourth roommate is the noisiest washer dryer LG has ever exported. Even sitting right next to that calamitous train wreck, the AirPods almost completely cancel it. The muting effect is so complete that it's almost disorienting at first. The only time these gave me trouble was when one of those lovely backup alarms sounded on a truck about 15 feet away. One of the cups muted itself temporarily, presumably because the amplitude of that stupid beeper was just too loud. Now, a lot of folks have already mentioned the pressurization effect, that kind of feeling that like your head is in a vacuum of sorts when you wear the AirPods. And yeah, it is more pronounced on these than on other ANC headphones. That's because that sensation of wanting to pop your ears is a psychosomatic response that comes from the lack of low frequency noise. And it's more dramatic on the AirPods because they're so effective at silencing. So I can't exactly deduct points for that. They're just doing a great job at what they say they're gonna do. To break it down succinctly, the ANC is like YouTube's shadow ban feature, almost completely effective in shutting out noise. Another biased Apple lover. Have you tried Surface headphones? You need your ears cleaned, I And what the AirPods do with that silence is also impressive. 
To my ear, the soundstage has all the spaciousness of the B&O H9i, with none of the murky heaviness that drove some to call Bose's QC35s overrated. It may not be the perfectly authentic sound meant for audio engineers to work with. That's more the domain of the Pandas, studio headphones that Drop produced in collaboration with THX. But the most relevant point to me is that the sound was good enough on the AirPods to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with everything else in my current loan locker. Rounding out the positives are the buttons and the battery. Yeah, I thought it a little strange at first just to see scaled-up Apple Watch controls here when most of the competition has transitioned to touchpads. But I quickly came to love turning the knob for volume, and the big mushy button is a satisfying way to toggle between noise cancelling and transparency. And the battery life is on par with the competition, about 20 hours in my testing, while constantly switching between MacBook Pro and iPhone 12 mini between transparency and ANC. Also, yeah, I did a phone call or two through these. Callers reported that I sounded excellent. It's better over the Macs than the iPhone? What about the pitfalls of the pods? Well, they're coming up after a word from a sponsor that brought a ton of fun to my kitchen this week. Check them out. I used to think I didn't like cooking. Turns out, I was just doing it the hard way. Before today's sponsor, my kitchen efforts were limited to mac and cheese, my dad's chili, and uh, whatever this was. HelloFresh helped me break out of that recipe rut. HelloFresh delivers to my door the exact ingredients and portions I need, so there's less prep and less wasted food. And normally, I ask my girlfriend for help in the kitchen. Translation, she cooks and I do the dishes. But not this time. Among many others, HelloFresh taught me how to make beef ragu spaghetti with zucchini and sesame soy pork bowls, and it all came out delicious. Not that I'm bragging, my technique is still blunt and I spill stuff all over the place. The cutting board is so small, I'm getting misty-eyed. But it is cool to be able to say, hey, I fed my three-person household in less than an hour and it was pretty healthy stuff. With flexible options for portion size and timing, the decision of when to cook and how much is entirely up to you. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code 10 Mobile to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code 10 Mobile to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Back on the AirPods, the bummers boil down to the case, the cord, and the cost. Now, the smart case isn't bad in and of itself, as much as it is an amplifier for the AirPods' other annoyances. Namely, they're huge, and they don't fold, so they're not very portable compared to most of the competition. Also, in the most Apple move ever, there's no power button. The headphones only know you want to put them in standby if you put them into the case. If you don't want to use the case because it looks goofy, you have to be content with the headphones losing between a half a percent to one percent charge per hour in their low power state, at least until three days go by, after which they drift into a deeper sleep. Moving on to the cord complaint, it's simple. It's all about the connector. Look, the lightning port makes sense if you own an iPhone, I guess, but even here, Apple is moving on to USB-C on the MacBook and the iPad. The iPhone has the MagSafe alternative now. We're coming to a point where some folks will have to keep a lightning cable around just for the AirPods, which is great until you forget it at home on a trip or you lose that cable and you need to cough up 19 bucks for a new one. Or 35 if you want an audio version you can plug in, because of course there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack either. Ugh. And those are inconveniences you just shouldn't have to put up with for $550. I mean, that's really the heart of why I hate how great these things are. I, they, they really are just too expensive. That might sound pretty rich coming from the guy whose favorite phone of the year costs $2,000 and favorite laptop costs twice that. But each of those products redefines its category in a profound and useful way. The AirPods Max, as incredible as they are, they're just a very nice set of noise-canceling headphones. And I fear that pricing them the way Apple has will drive headphone prices up in much the same way the iPhone X normalized $1,000 smartphones, in most cases, without much justification. Don't get me wrong, 
The AirPods are in many ways exquisite. And if I'd created a product like this, I'd want to charge top dollar too. But I'm just not ready to sit here and say most folks should spend as much as it would cost to get an iPhone SE and a set of classic AirPods for a headset. Especially when headphones like Sony's XM4s offer their own brand of excellence for less than half the price. Folks, long as this video was, there are still a few things I left out, and here's where I tell you where to find them. In addition to the aforementioned Snazzy Q and El Jefe reviews, allow me to point you to Christine Chan's review at iMore and David Kogan's Real World Test at The Unlocker, all of which are linked below. This review was produced following seven days with retail AirPods Max purchased by Mr. Mobile. As always, no manufacturer compensation nor copy approval was involved. These are my own opinions, and Apple is seeing them for the first time right alongside you. Until next time, thanks for watching, and unless, like me, you couldn't get anyone to join you on those cold holiday walkabouts, remember to stay safe when you're around others and mask up while you stay mobile, my friends.